when you um, when you first make contact with an artist, how do you approach it? If you've if you've heard some ropey old demos and you've decided it's somebody you want to work with, what what do you say to them? Do you tell them how great? Well, first thing is, most bands these days don't have ropey old demos. This is true <laughs> because it's, it's, hard, it's hard to best them sometimes. Isn't <laughs> yes, it? that is the frightening thing is most bands demos are you know Pro Tools up you know they're all yeah. polished tuned double tracked yeah. mixed perfect and uh it gets very difficult actually yeah. because you kind of think well hang on the first thing you put it on and you think whoa it jumps out and you think wow this band's fantastic mm. and then you sort of listen again and you kind of think well hang on they've never made a record before they've obviously got some whiz kid pro yeah. tools engineer guy mm. Oh, he's sampled all the drums and everything else, you know. Yeah. So you've got no idea what the drummer's like. You're starting from square one. Yeah. And the best way to see a band really is at a gig. Yeah. Or if you can't bear the gig, at a rehearsal room, really, yeah. and get to know what it's all about. You know, yeah. the worst thing actually is nowadays is there aren't ropey old demos. No. Know? It's always good point. Yeah. totally polished up and not really. A, it's not really a demo anymore it's yeah. just you know it's not an honest representation of where the band are at mm. so you have to be a bit cautious when you're listening to those demos I think so what do you say to them when you've heard their extremely polished drum replaced <laughs> Pro Tools <laughs> mastered to <laughs> an inch of its life <laughs> you, 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 quite, you quite like the songs you ring up and you go hello it's John Leckie yeah, I really like your demos yeah what do you, what do you say <laughs> what do I say um, I don't know really I just, I just kind of say um, well I'd rather do it in the rehearsal room actually yeah. and go go and see them as they play together yeah. and what they want to do what they're aiming to do whether mm. they're aiming for it to sound them realistically them or whether they're aiming to um, whether they're you know most bands want to make the best record ever mm. you know which nowadays often means sampling all the drums and doing all that kind of things. Depends on kind of how honest they are about yeah. themselves mm. and what the record company involvement is. You know, whether the record company is only interested in hits. Mm. You know, if it's, you know, Sony or EMI, all they want is the hit single. Yeah. Um, and I'd. I'd, I'd rather work with artists that are sort of honest, you know, about yeah. their sound and their abilities and the songs and that mm. kind of thing. Is that why you've ended up probably in more recent years doing more world music y kind of projects where it is more about just probably, capturing yeah. a performance? Yeah, probably. And is that sort of music you go out and buy and listen to and enjoy particularly? Or do you go um, out and buy? I buy all sorts of things. Yeah. I don't really buy chart stuff. You know, I don't no. buy like, Britney Spears or to the name Lady Gaga or something I mean I don't do that um, I don't know what music I buy actually it's always a funny question they go what you're listening to well, yeah, how do, I mean, do you listen to six music or how do, you, how do you discover things or find things like that what are your sources do you poke around on the internet and... yeah I poke around on the internet more than yeah. anything um, recommendations from friends yeah and magazines and recommendations right. from friends and Mojo and Mojo Word Cube Guardian, so Sunday Times. So you you, you, you read a lot of you yeah. read a lot of reviews then. Yeah, and if I like if something attracts me, I'll uh, I'll, I'll actually go and buy. You know, I will buy it on the basis of a review. Yeah, yeah. and I probably buy what do I buy? Probably ten, ten, twelve CDs a, a month or something. I just go have a splurt on Amazon. And yeah. Tick everything off and stuff. Do you keep everything, or do you listen to them once and go, "That was rubbish," and put it, throw it back at? Uh, <laughs> <record> <laughs> tape exchange or whatever you do these days. Um, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Usually, I keep it because very often you can rediscover things. Yeah, you know? that was an interesting thing actually about downloads and stuff. Right, is that when you got vinyl or racks of CDs, you know, like I see, you know, you have and you have a library of mu a library of music was mm. on there, and you can go back and rediscover the CD that you you know just threw on the shelf and didn't like yeah. and then five or six years later you can you can pick it off and see it whereas with all the download stuff you'll delete it yeah. and it'll be gone yeah you know um and so yeah you're at a, often when you've got your record collection you know not only can you share it with friends like you can go oh uh, you know that band the coral and go oh yeah i've got three of their records yeah you take one or something you know i often give 
CDs to friends that come around so right. that they can discover it and that kind of thing. But, you know, with internet and downloads and people just delete now and it's yeah. gone. People don't really build up a, a library or a collection because there's that, that whole thing of your personality, who you are, is your record collection. I suppose that's mm. your iPod, really, isn't it? Yeah. But I don't know. I, I just, I'm, I'm completely beflummoxed by digitals and iPods and this whole what Microwaves. you play music for. <laughs> you know, you got to remember that. Yeah. Well, you got to remember. <laughs> you got to remember that in the '60s or something, or in the '60s or '70s, there was your record collection. You know, and you listen. You may only have ten yeah. or twelve records, yeah. but you listened to them and you shared them and that kind of thing. Um, and now you've got, you know, now you've got thirty thousand songs there. Mm. But the other thing is, is that you never heard music unless you went home and played it. Mm. You know, and it was. It was like a little sort of clique gang thing where mm. you would be into the blues or jazz or you'd be into African music. So all your mates would be into African music and that's what you would do. Um, and now there's so much music everywhere. Every time you go shopping, you know, you mm. go around some shopping place and, you know, you want to buy a pair of shoes and you're just bombarded with music everywhere. Yeah. Um, TV and stuff, you know, when MTV first came out, you know, everyone's wow, look at that. You know, there's you know, everyone's making little videos for their songs and it was great. But now, you know, you've got on Sky there's like thirty music channels yeah. which you never watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think, you know, music's totally saturated our life. Yeah. You know. Which kind of puts you off it, you know. Yeah, you, absolutely. Remember when you got your first car radio yeah. or your first cassette in mm -hmm. the car with a graphic, you know, yeah. I used to have this cassette with a graphic equaliser in the car and it was yeah. fantastic yeah. used to play stuff in the car all the time and I never now just listen to Radio 4 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's an age thing I think it's because you're kind of bombarded it's probably is an age thing no right? well I listen to Radio 4 and I'm, mm. not, I'm not quite as old as you so you know <laughs> But, but it's true, yeah. I mean, well, I suppose it's partly also if you spent all day listening to music in the studio, the last thing you want to do driving home. Yeah, but I still but do. Then, I listen to music. I was thinking music. about that. I did, yeah. Well, in I the seventies, I used yeah. to be in the studio all day and still drive home and. You're right, actually. Listen to stuff. So did I. I'd give Tony yeah. a lift home from Livingston, and we'd listen as to CC Sputnik on the, the, the Jesus and Mary chain at deafening volume on the way home. Yeah, no, you would. You yeah. still listen to music yeah. in What's those there? It's because you weren't bombarded with it all the time. And the other thing is that. You're bombarded with maximized music, yeah. you know, and that thing of uh, where it's always present, loud. everything's loud, every little detail is is pushed forward mm. so that you don't miss it. You know, mm. there's no sort of drop in it. There's no what's the word? Dimin Dynamic diminuendo. Well, yeah, yeah no, quite bits. <laughs> like Italian word diminu yes. diminuendo. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Pianissimo. <laughs> Classical trained. <laughs> <laughs>